Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where, because it is the season, we're talking about this weird but interesting junction of politics and music. <laughs> now, uh, for those who are politically inclined, or for those uh, who only have uh, broadcast television and nothing else, remember the old pair of rabbit ears? Um, probably not anymore, but... Um, people will remember that if they were around in 1968, which is where we're going in a moment. But uh, last night was uh, the Republican National Convention's first night uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And a lot of people have noticed that something rather different happened. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, musical performances um, are increasingly common, and they've been common for a long time, at various uh, political rallies, at inaugurations and at conventions themselves. But last night, there was a band that essentially was the glue that held the whole thing together. Uh, they played as people walked in, they played uh, while people waited between speakers and various other events. Um, and they were on stage, you know, just on stage left the entire evening while the platform speakers were obviously in the middle. And I've looked these guys up, they're all highly professional now. Nashville session musicians, because of course, Nashville, much like New York, LA, London, etc., has a very strong and um, very strong session musician community and has done for many decades. Glenn Campbell, for example, came out of there among other places before he went over uh, to do work in LA, but he always was attached to both the session scene in LA and in Nashville. And these guys, when they're performing as a band together, go by the name Six Wire. That's the name of their band. And a lot of people were remarking that they were very, very good. They played a lot of different cover songs. I heard some uh, Lover Boy, some Doobie Brothers, um, some John Mellencamp, who's a Democrat, and he might not like being played at a Republican convention, but uh, that's the way it works with live music. You don't need the express consent of an artists to play their music live the way you would to cover it on a formal recording. Um, so a lot of people found that very interesting, and it got me thinking about some of the other connections between these kinds of events and music. Well, in 1968, there was a very top-selling single written all about a political convention, and this was Graham Nash, of course, of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Sometimes Young. Um, he wrote this song called Chicago, and it was all about the planned demonstrations that were to take place at that year's Democratic National National convention in Chicago, where ultimately they nominated Hubert Humphrey. Now, that convention was very notable through history for several reasons. There was a lot of um, a lot of uh, you know uncertainty over who that party's nominee was going to be. Uh, there was a very hard fought primary. Um, there was Eugene McCarthy. There was Robert F. Kennedy. Who, uh, there was Senator Robert F. Kennedy who was shot in the middle of the campaign. There was going to be President Lyndon Johnson, but he decided in the midst of that season not to continue with his bid to run for re-election. <laughs> and this paved the way, pardon me, for Hubert Humphrey, uh, who eventually became the nominee. And he was sort of a a um, compromise as he was the sitting vice president. But the big issue at that time was the war in Vietnam. And there were a lot of young people, both in the convention and outside, who strongly voiced their opinion that the Democratic platform at the time should be uh, about withdrawing or drawing down or making some sort of peace. In other words, they wanted a more anti-war platform. And this song was all about that. Won't you please come to Chicago? Now, the protests that took place outside of the convention were noted because there was a lot of violence. Many people would say that it was an example of police brutality. And the mayor, Mayor Daly, um, who was in the convention hall most nights, was blamed for giving the police orders to um, allegedly, but a lot of people would say actually, uh, met out that brutality. 
And so that was the first real example of a convention having its own soundtrack, albeit from the purpose of and the perspective of trying to change what was going on in the convention, a protest anthem. And of course, this isn't a convention, but at the inauguration of Bill Clinton, Fleetwood Mac uh, reunited to perform Don't Stop from the famous Rumors album. Clinton had used that campaign song um on the campaign trail um frank sinatra was among the many very prominent performers who performed at uh president reagan's inauguration dean martin was there um don rickles was there it was really sort of like a vegas rat pack type of reunion because reagan of course as an actor was a friend with all of these showbiz types and they were of his generation um, Reagan had a bit more difficulty trying to um, associate himself with the younger generation because at one point during a campaign, he started using Bruce Springsteen's song Born in the USA, only to later be informed that that song was a protest song about how soldiers were treated during the Vietnam War, after the Vietnam War, and the economic decline of the early 1980s that many people, including Springsteen himself, blamed on the policies of Ronald Reagan. So uh, while the chorus of that song is ostensibly very positive and patriotic, the verses are quite pessimistic. And Springsteen commented once that while the song is very upbeat, um, very uh, much in a major key, he's done a version in a minor key just with solo steel guitar um, that really emphasizes the sort of protesty Arlo Guthrie type of roots of the song as he imagined it before it got a really sort of 80s rock production with lots of synthesizers and that gated drum sound, which just made everyone, including an elderly Ronald Reagan, want to dance. But I do think there's something unique about what this band Six Wire did last night. And I don't know if they're going to be there every night. I don't know if they're sort of the house band or if other bands are going to do it. But I actually thought it was a really interesting idea to have a house band do what a house band does. Um, it could have been, you know, a coffee shop or a strip club where they used to have comedy, jazz and music back in the 60s and 70s. That's how Jay Leno got his start as the comedian, obviously not the stripper, um, but that's his maybe. So I, I thought it was very interesting and it must have been, there must have been more pressure than usual, obviously on the band because two days before, there was an assassination attempt uh, on the life of former President Trump, and um, it wasn't necessarily publicized whether he would be there or not, but he was. And during his uh, monumental walking in to the event, um, the band performed with the country singer Lee Greenwood, who sung a song that Trump plays a lot at his rallies, um, God Bless the USA. And that must have been, even for seasoned session musicians, um, with the eyes of the entire planet on that particular moment, that must have been, uh, you know, a lot of nerves, but they played it really well, because obviously that's what session musicians are meant to do. A session musician is there for the good times and the bad. They're there for the funerals. They're there for the weddings. They're there for commercial jingles. They're there to back up Elvis, Frank Sinatra, you know, and the top artists of, frankly, any era, the Beach Boys like, and Campbell again. Uh, was a session musician with the Beach Boys. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, and the musician in me found that that's what really captured my attention. So while all of the mainstream news and alternative news and other things are talking about the speeches, as as is natural, and about Trump's appearance and all the rest of it, um, a musical perspective of what happened is really interesting. And it will be interesting to see if Six Wire are back. I hope they are, because they were good. I want to hear more of them. And it will be interesting to see what artist or artists uh, perform at the Democratic National Convention, which this year, like in 1968, is in Chicago next month. So um, whether you like politics or not, luckily music is there at all times. <laughs> like, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take care.